This is Craig Migliaccio from AEC Service Tech, and today we're going over the different vacuum hose setups used in the field in order to pull air, pull moisture out of the refrigerant tubing in order to get it ready for a refrigerant. So we're going to go over the different tips, the different setups, the different fittings used, and why or why not to include a manifold. So I just want to go over a couple tips, and so this tubing is empty, and it's already been pressure tested, you've leak checked it, and that's when you want to go ahead and do your vacuum. Now you want a precise vacuum gauge in order to read your micron reading, which is uh, going to be below 500 microns. Another important thing to do is to remove this little restriction from the port. So these are Schrader valves, they're very tiny, and you don't want to have to pull a vacuum through them. The other thing is if this is installed and you're reading a vacuum out here, then what's going to happen is the vacuum inside is not going to be as deep as what you're reading on the screen. So when you go to shut it off, the vacuum level is just going to jump up to a high number. When you remove the valve core, when you're reading your vacuum level out here, it's going to be more accurate to what it actually is in the tubing. So to remove the valve core, you can use a little tool like this, this little plastic piece right here. But if the tubing is empty, you can just use the back of the valve core removal tool. And so you don't have to in it completely install this onto the port. So you can just use this right here and then move on to your next step. If you remove the valve core from this port, you're going to have to leave the valve core removal tool, the VCRT, on the port the entire time during the vacuum process. And you're not going to put this little uh, valve core back in again until these tubes have positive pressure from the refrigerant. And so the nice thing about having a valve core removal tool here, there's two pluses to this. You can shut it off, and so you can shut off your vacuum pump and hoses from the vacuum, right? The other thing is over here on the side port, you can measure the actual vacuum in the system if you mount your, your vacuum gauge right here. Uh, another quick little mention is these typically come with a valve core in the side, and there is a valve core depressor but I typically remove this anytime I mount this over here on the side. So I just want to point this out. This is a half inch hose, and right here you have a 3 8 hose, and right here you have a quarter inch, and then here you have a quarter inch with a valve core depressor. So you don't want any restrictions in the hose setup, and so this is going to be able to pull a vacuum a lot faster than something like this. And so uh, a hose that's much larger uh, will pull a vacuum much faster even with a smaller sized vacuum pump. And so this hose with a 2 CFM pump would pull much faster than this hose right here with a 7 CFM vacuum pump. As far as a vacuum pump size is concerned, we typically use a 2 CFM pump or a 7 CFM pump or anything in the range of that uh, for residential and light commercial air conditioning systems. And the reason for that is it really has to do more with the size hose that you're using and the reduction in restrictions compared to the actual vacuum pump size. In this instance, this one's a line voltage one and this one's a battery operated one. This is vacuum hose setup number one. And so this is the absolute simplest way to pull a vacuum and it's with one single hose. And so this one happens to be a half inch hose, but you can use a 3 8 hose. You can use a, even a quarter inch hose if you need to. Uh, but realistically, it'll be able to pull a deep vacuum pretty quickly with a single hose that's very large. So you have a half inch top, half inch hose, and then you have a quarter inch fitting on the end of the hose going into the valve core removal tool. We have the valve core removed here. And so what's nice about this is you can shut this off and you're always going to be reading the vacuum level on the system even when you have the hose and vacuum pump isolated. Now, over at this port right here, you would have to keep the valve core in the port if you did not have a valve core removal tool here in order to valve this off. And so, you know, this gets by with only one valve core removal tool. Um, now, here's the thing. Uh, you would not be removing this until after you broke the vacuum with refrigerant from this outdoor unit. So you would allow refrigerant through here, then you disconnect this. The valve core that's here would hold back the refrigerant the only thing that I don't like about that is that you're allowing the refrigerant and the refrigerant oil up into the vacuum gauge sensor, and it's possible that a vacuum gauge is not rated for that high a pressure. And now this vacuum gauge has a max pressure rating of 500 PSI, so it wouldn't be a problem to do that. Uh, but I like to take care of my vacuum gauge, and uh, so I like to valve it off so I don't shoot the refrigerant oil up into the sensor and potentially contaminate it, uh, which then I would have to end up cleaning it. Uh, so let's go ahead and move on to setup number two. 
So this is vacuum setup number two and it's done on a two port system and all we really did is we added a valve core removal tool here. And with this setup, you're gonna have the valve core removed at the port here so that you can measure your vacuum. So once you pull down to say whatever your target is of maybe 200 microns or something like that, what you can do is you can go ahead and shut this off to isolate the uh, vacuum pump and the hose from the rest of the system. You're gonna read the true vacuum level during the decay test or what we also like to call the standing vacuum test. And right before you get ready to break the vacuum with refrigerant from the system by opening these up with your ratcheting service wrench, what you can do is you can simply just shut this right here right before you go ahead and open it. Uh, so you allow refrigerant through, but you don't contaminate the vacuum gauge. This is the third vacuum hose setup and it's still a single hose, but it's gonna use two valve core removal tools. One valve core removal tool is used to isolate the vacuum pump and the vacuum hose from the system. And the second valve core removal tool is used to isolate the vacuum gauge when you're breaking the vacuum with refrigerant from the unit. Now, typically mini splits only have that single port and you can see that it's, in this case, is a 5 16th port. And so we're using this quarter inch to 5 16th adapter on the valve core removal tool in order to be able to attach and accomplish this. If the valve core removal tool that you have doesn't have this fitting, then you need an actual 5 16th valve core removal tool instead of a quarter inch valve core removal tool. This one just happens to be a dual size VCRT. This is vacuum hose setup number four, and it includes two vacuum hoses that are connected directly from the vacuum pump over to the ends of the VCRTs. Now, there is no third valve core removal tool here. It's just directly connected over for your vacuum gauge. And so when you isolate the hoses in the vacuum pump from the rest of the system, you're gonna be able to measure your vacuum level in the system. So that's during the standing vacuum test, also known as the decay test. The only issue is when you break the vacuum with refrigerant uh, right here uh, from the outdoor unit, or you add refrigerant in here to break the vacuum, you're gonna end up getting refrigerant oil and refrigerant up into the sensor. And depending on the vacuum gauge, it may end up dirtying the sensor. And some vacuum gauges may not be rated for high pressure for the refrigerant entering. Uh, so that's the only consideration for this one right here. And in this case, you may or may not have a valve core in the side of the VCRT, so just keep that in mind because you would need a valve core depressor in this little tool right here in order to measure your vacuum. Also, if your vacuum pump did not have the correct amount of fittings on there, you can use something like this, a Y fitting. So you have 3 8 to 3 8 to 3 8 or you could use another Y fitting in order to branch off. And so in this case, we have a half inch here, a 3 8 here. And so this is a 3 8 fitting, but a half inch hose. This is a half inch fitting and a half inch hose. Now, if you were gonna have to use a smaller hose, so say you only had like one large hose, you would put that on the vapor side right here, and then you would just put maybe the quarter inch hose from here over to your liquid line, because there's more volume in this tube than there is in this tube. This is vacuum hose setup number five, and this includes the third valve core removal tool. So this one has three valve core removal tools. This is a two hose vacuum setup. We have two hoses directly connected from the vacuum pump over to the end of this VCRT and this VCRT. And so our valve cores are removed here and here and also on the side of this VCRT. So we can get down to our micron level here and shut off here and here. And then we can isolate the hoses in the vacuum pump from the rest of the system. And we can read the true vacuum level right here during our standing vacuum test in order to see if it rises due to maybe a leak or maybe water or something like that. And so when we get ready to open up these service valves here, we're gonna close this and then we can open this up and therefore we will not be contaminating our vacuum gauge sensor here. So even though with our standing vacuum tests, we wanna be measuring say 500 microns or lower per the EPA 608, what we really try to do is get down to about 100 or 200 microns during the standing vacuum test, maybe 300 microns even. But the thing is, we just wanna make sure that this micron level is not rising during the standing vacuum test when we have the hoses and vacuum pump isolated from the system. This is vacuum hose setup number six and it includes a four port digital manifold. Now I prefer to keep the manifold out of the vacuum procedure because it does increase the amount of restrictions and the number of hoses uh, that you're gonna have to include on the setup. The other thing is you are going through quarter inch ports here and here, so you're pretty much restricted to end up using quarter inch hoses here, but you could use a quarter inch by say three eighths, 
hose and then uh, go back down the quarter inch again here. So those are just some things to think about. Now, so how this works is you have one hose going from the vacuum pump over to the manifold. You pull the vacuum down. You're gonna be removing the you know, valve course here and you have your two VCRTs right here so you can always install them afterwards. So at least you've removed the valve core from the ports. But after you get down to say 200 microns or so, you always want to turn all these valves to the off position, turn them back on again, because there could be a little bit of air, you know, trapped around it. Then you let the micron gauge get back down to say 200 or 100 or whatever you would like it to be. Then you shut it, this off, and that's gonna isolate the vacuum hose and the vacuum pump from the rest of the setup. Now the issue with this is that you are trying to hold the vacuum in the hoses. And depending on these hoses, they might not be vacuum rated. They might just be pressure rated. And so you might be leaking uh, your vacuum. So the vacuum level might be increasing during this time, which is called the standing vacuum test or the decay test. And so, but that could be a problem. And it could also be that you have a leaky hose. You could have a leaky manifold. You know, it just depends. And, and so the more hoses, the more things that you add onto a vacuum setup, the more possibilities for a chance for a leak. Uh, during your decay test. So anyway, say it's holding, say it's 100, 200 microns. So basically what you're gonna do is then you can just shut off this vacuum uh, gauge right here, right before breaking the vacuum with refrigerant from the system here, or you can take this micron gauge off here and you can add your refrigerant from the refrigerant bottle into this port and then break the vacuum by adding refrigerant in through this way. Um, and so basically then it's going to go right into the system via these two hoses. Uh, so uh, that's a couple ways to do it. The other thing is when we are breaking the vacuum with refrigerant from the bottle, we typically put it into the liquid line. And the reason for that is the liquid line is smaller in its volume. And what we're trying to do is trying to get the liquid refrigerant from the bottle into that liquid line without it flashing and vaporizing until we can get the full amount in that we want. So anyway, that's the four port manifold gauge set. That's the only reason that uh, manufacturers may even make a four port manifold. But like I said, I like to keep the manifolds away from my vacuum setup. I'm just showing you this in case you happen to be working with somebody that prefers this method. Let me show you another version of this vacuum setup. This is vacuum setup number seven, and it includes the four port manifold again. And this time we added the vacuum gauge over here to the side of the valve core removal tool. And so uh, this valve right here will be off. And if you needed to charge with this to break the vacuum, you know, you could just turn this back on. You could also put a cap here. Now with this setup, what you're gonna do is once you get down to the micron level of maybe 100 or 200, you can shut both of these off and now you don't have to trap your vacuum in the hoses. So at least during the standing vacuum test, you can read a more accurate vacuum level as well. It's closer to the system. So it will be more accurate of a measurement instead of being all the way over here. You got to remember that if you're over here, it's going to be closer to the vacuum pump than it would be to the system. So it might show a lower vacuum level than what it really is in the system. But this one, even when the pump is running, even when you're like this, is gonna be more accurate because it's really close to the system and you have the valve cores removed. So anyway, during the standing vacuum test, um, you're going to have to leave this in place and then you're going to break the vacuum, say with refrigerant from the outdoor unit at the service valves or potentially over here on the side of the liquid uh, valve core removal tool. And so you're gonna be allowing refrigerant and refrigerant oil to come in and contaminate this sensor, but this is gonna to have to be left in place with this setup until after you have positive pressure at the port. Also, if you've removed this valve core, you're definitely gonna to have to leave both this on and the VCRT until you replace the valve core right here in the port. And so after this vacuum is done, you may have to try to clean that vacuum sensor afterwards, but it just depends on the vacuum gauge manufacturer. Some you have to clean every time, some uh, will still work properly. This is vacuum hose setup number eight, and it's still including the four port manifold, the single hose over to the vacuum. And so really you're only using this four port manifold as a T, you know, or a Y fitting. You could totally replace this right here with a Y. And you know, why not? You know, you're gonna be reducing the restrictions and reducing the possibilities for a leak, but anyway. Uh, with this setup, you're going to have a third valve core removal tool. So after you pull down to say 100 or 200 microns, you can shut these valves like this, and then you can 
read your standing vacuum test vacuum level here, and then right before you're breaking the vacuum with refrigerant from this outdoor unit at the service valves, you can go ahead and shut this. And so at least this gives you that true standing vacuum test level, and it gives you a way to protect your vacuum gauge from any contamination at the sensor. This is vacuum hose setup number nine, and it includes three valve core removal tools. I'm not gonna spend too, too much time on this because we are trying to pull a vacuum through a three port manifold, and it's just gonna slow it down. I would much rather prefer having a Y fitting or maybe a T fitting here, even if you were trying to use three hoses. Uh, but you could certainly just take these two hoses and come from directly from your vacuum pump, even if you were using quarter inch hoses, if you had just a T right here instead. And so uh, basically what you are not going to need is valves over here because you have valves over here. So if you, anytime that you are removing the valve core here and here, you're going to have to have a valve core removal tool. And that means that you could utilize these valves for isolating the vacuum like the vacuum hoses in the vacuum pump, but also for charging. So if you were to break the vacuum with refrigerant from the bottle, you could add it in right here utilizing this valve. And so you don't necessarily need the valves on the three port manifold. It's just restricting the flow and extending the time in which it takes in order to, to pull a deep vacuum. The other thing with including a three port manifold is the potential for leaks. Now, early on in my career, say 20 years ago, you know, this is something I struggled with was leaking spots on my three port manifolds. And so I try to not include this in the setup. The other thing is you could also have say old oil in here from maybe measuring the refrigerant charge back when, and now you're recontaminating your vacuum pump and your vacuum pump oil, you know, with the old oil in your manifold gauge set if you're using this for refrigerant charging and recovery and for vacuum. So I like to not include any type of three port manifold in a vacuum setup. This is vacuum setup number 10. And so there is no manifold, it's only two hoses. We're using a quarter inch T here because we're only using quarter inch hoses. The valve core depressors have been removed from the ends of these two hoses right here. And so if you have not had a chance to pick up a larger diameter hose, this might be a way for you to kind of start removing the manifold from your vacuum setups. The other thing is your normal quarter inch hoses, you wanna keep in mind that some of those are not vacuum rated. And if they have a ball valve right here, those are typically not vacuum rated. So you gotta look at the manufacturer of the hoses to see you know, what's what. But I highly recommend getting thicker diameter hoses uh, for the vacuum setup. In summary, I highly recommend that you use this two hose vacuum setup with three valve core removal tools in order to pull an effective vacuum on a two port system. And for a single port system, such as a mini split, I typically use a single hose setup with two valve core removal tools. And that second one is just there in order to valve off my vacuum gauge when I'm breaking the vacuum with refrigerant. I hope this video has helped. And if you're looking for any of the tools used in this video, I have them linked down in the description section below. And if you want to learn more about HVAC, make sure to check out our refrigerant charging and service procedures for air conditioning book. And so this book goes over how to get a system ready for refrigerant, how to check the refrigerant charge, how to add refrigerant, and how to troubleshoot as well. So you can check that out at our website at acservicetech.com. And we also have our inverter mini split operation and service procedures book at our website. And so both of these books are also available over on Amazon. And so hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.